They're small, but they're quite capable. These little buggers can fit in some pretty small cases. Although the NR200 has plenty of clearance as long as you set up your low profile cooler upright, you don't need a lot of cooler to get a whole lot of cooling. And welcome back to Machines and More. In the last few episodes, we've been investigating the best liquid and air cooling options in the Cooler Master NR200. I'm going to turn my attention to smaller, low profile coolers today. These coolers are usually less than 75 millimeters in height and are compact in order to fit into some very small cases. And since they are flatter coolers, the airflow direction is usually set up as towards or away from the motherboard. Now the official cooler spec from Cooler Master on the NR200 is 155mm and that limits the amount of fan configurations that builders can play around with since there really is just enough space to fit the tower and nothing more. Uh, with these lower coolers however, their small size gives us a lovely sandbox to play in. Before I jump into a few reviews and comparisons of low profile coolers in this case, I'm going to walk you through the various configurations that you can play around with in the NR200. And knowing the best orientation means we can effectively compare these coolers. As it turns out, there's a lot of different things you can try out, and some of them have a profound impact. Not all of us want to overclock our chips to the max, and in fact for AMD's Zen 2 chips and the higher tier Comet Lake chips, things are already pushed pretty high in stock configuration, so running in stock or auto clocks is something that a lot of us do. Uh, for stock clocks, low profile coolers are fairly capable, and in fact AMD's stock cooler is plenty sufficient. However, the newer Intel chips don't come with a stock cooler, so we'll take a look at a fairly popular low profile cooler. The Noctua L12S is a little bit like a C14S Mini, which is the bigger air cooler that I highly recommend for this case. Uh, the heatsink is less than half the mass of the C14S's heatsink, but it definitely performs better than half as well. Uh, it comes equipped with a single slim Noctua NFA 12 by 15 millimeter fan, which is mounted underneath the heatsink in the stock orientation. I'll talk more about this cooler in its detailed review, but suffice to say it is ubiquitous enough and modular uh, to give us a general idea of how you want to use a low profile cooler. Unlike with the U12 AI tested in various configurations where it was hard to really mess up fan configurations, low profile coolers are a different story. Now the difference uh, from my research is vast between okay and downright fantastic setups. Although many of the configurations discussed here will be relating to the use of the mesh panel, I'll also show some recommendations for our viewers with the NR200P. Since I'm still waiting on my NR200P to arrive for a final testing, I went ahead and created my own high-tech cardboard panel attached to the side panel with some equally high-tech stuff, blue tech. Uh, before anything else, I'll start with one very important recommendation. The primary direction of airflow in this case is from bottom to top. As long as you're air cooling your GPU, which most of us will be, the bottom has to intake air and naturally the top has to exhaust that air out. So you absolutely have to prioritize that aspect of this case. Now there is a very specific scenario where you would want to reverse that direction, but that's not the topic of this video today. Uh, all testing except for the last test is done with a slight all core overclocked Ryzen 7 3700X at 4.1 gigahertz on 1.15 volts on a Gigabyte X570 ITX board. Now for the CPU side of things, I'm running the Classroom Blender Render 2.82, and I'm taking the average temps for the final 100 seconds. Now this is a lower overclock than the big air cooler test since the small coolers just can't dissipate off the heat fast enough. Now for the GPU included test, I'm running the Unigen Heaven 4.0 benchmark simultaneously on a 1660 Super which is a fairly average GPU, and here I'm also averaging out the final 100 seconds. The fan speeds are all locked on a fan controller to give similar noise performance, although I will caveat that different configurations naturally have different acoustic properties, so you'll see some slight differences occurring. As I add fans, I do leave the fan speeds locked and show the noise gain from the additional fans. The temperatures are reported as the delta over the ambient room temperatures, which allows for you to calculate and adjust for your typical use environment. And there's a lot of fun insights to share, so let's jump right into some testing results. The first thing I'll show you is basically the freebies. Uh, that means you don't need to spend any money to get these things right. 
So should you run the fan to push air towards the motherboard or draw it away from it? Well, this one is actually pretty easy. With two Arctic P12 fans on the top set to exhaust, the stock L12S with a slim NFA 12 by 15 millimeter fan mounted underneath performs two and a half degrees better when pushing air towards the motherboard. Now, VRM temps were similarly better, though not critical since the worst day ever got on this board was about 50 degrees. So there's really nothing to write at home about in terms of VRM thermals. Now, the next consideration is only applicable where you have an option. And on the L12S, one can either top mount the fan or bottom mount the fan under the heatsink. Since there's no real problem running it on the top, yielding about 85 millimeters of cooler height, this one is an obvious recommendation as well. Just run it at the top of the heatsink for a degree and a half of optimization. A plenty of low profile coolers, including the others I will review, all come by default in this orientation already. The next one here is a fun one. Now the bigger tower coolers don't give us this option, but you absolutely can use the side panel with low profile coolers, and you should. Uh, with the simple Cooler Master Sickle Flow 120 millimeter fan thrown onto the side panel, there's an enormous boost to performance. The L12S with side panel fan performs more than five degrees better with just a gentle fan curve at 1000 RPM. And so this one is a no brainer. If you run the stock AMD cooler or any cooler drying air from around that side panel, absolutely mount that radiator and fan panel just to give it fresh air. Uh, so taking a quick review, just by orienting the fan correctly and throwing in one fan, you're looking at about nine degrees worth of gain over the worst configuration. So how about the mesh panel versus a solid panel? On an apples to apples basis, without the side panel fan, the solid panel will only give about a one degree penalty over the mesh panel. And not bad, right? For the solid panel, placing the fan at the top of the heatsink also yields a small gain. In this case, it's more likely due to the fact that the fan is drawing air through the back panel where that 92 millimeter fan would mount. Now to sum things up, on a CPU only basis, the best arrangement for the mesh panel gives about a 6.4 degree improvement over a solid panel. So whether that's okay is up to you, since honestly, these are still very decent temps. In a 25 degree room, you're looking at about sub 70 degree thermals at 100% utilization on overclock loads. So that's really incredible. So how important is it to run two exhaust fans at the top in the combined use scenario? It's not a big difference with big tower coolers, but it's actually very important for low profile coolers. The emission of one single top exhaust fan results in a penalty of almost two degrees for the GPU and almost three degrees for the CPU. With that, I'd argue that two top exhausts are always mandatory when operating a low profile cooler. How about bottom fans? Bottom fans relate primarily to GPU thermals and typically don't have a meaningful impact on CPU thermals. Uh, with the GPU running, there's a small flip-flop between the fan under the heatsink and above the heatsink, but don't worry about that because this is without a side panel fan. And so you'll see later on why that is. I threw in two NFA 12 by 25s at the bottom, which resulted in a small noise addition. But I don't know that the gains are worth it just based on this chart alone, especially since you're only looking at about one or two degrees of GPU gains with more noise and added cost. However, let's just proceed with the bottom fan since I think you'll want to keep them on after you see the results when I throw in the side panel fan. When the side panel fan is added, regardless of where the cooler fan is mounted, you're gonna see an enormous gain in performance, more so with the GPU running. Now this is downright crazy. Anywhere from six to almost 11 degrees of gain on the CPU thermals with just a side fan running at 1000 RPM. As you could imagine, a fresh source of cool air really helps mitigate the warm GPU exhaust that would otherwise be the sole source for the cooler. The best configuration is the fan on top of the heatsink and with a side panel fan, which is ever so slightly higher in terms of noise, but this is really due to the proximity of the cooler fan to the outer panel. With how good this configuration is, you could just dial things back a bit and still get the best thermals. Now what I like about this configuration is just how balanced GPU and CPU thermals are. You're really getting the best of both worlds here. The effect of the bottom fans was fairly subdued without the side intake, but I'm convinced by this comparison here that 
when you're running the side panel fan, which you definitely should, um, adding two bottom fans is actually a fantastic idea, resulting in more than four degrees of gain for the GPU here. So since you can do it with the L12S, how about a push-pull orientation? With a side fan in place, adding another fan on the heatsink adds even more noise. And as it turns out, it's actually not that great compared to the other options. Uh, this one is a clear don't bother if you're using an L12S with a mesh panel. And we'll see about the solid panel later. I picked what I think is the worst way to run a low profile cooler, which is just one top exhaust and no bottom fans. And I compared it to the best arrangement that we just looked at. Now it's a vast improvement. 13 degrees at the CPU and three degrees at the GPU. Now there's some added noise penalty from all those extra fans, but again, you can just dial back the fans and you'll still be significantly ahead. How about for our NR200P? There's not a whole lot to play with since there's no uh, side panel option uh, for the fan mount, but the push-pull may be an option to go with here. Now the cooler is already being starved for air, so the addition of that push-pull does appear to help a little bit in the solid panel scenario. And now note how GPU temps are hardly affected by it, even improved somewhat. With six fans in each arrangement in play, Note how much better the mesh panel is for the CPU thermals. It's only a slight impact on GPU temps, which is reassuring, but if you're running the glass panel with the low profile cooler, be aware that there is a heavy penalty, primarily from not having a side panel fan. Now, since you could run a thicker fan, should you? I won't recommend that you go out and throw an NFA 12 by 25 on there since that fan is nearly 60% of the cost of the whole cooler, at which point you just size the whole ensemble up. But is there a big difference between the slim NFA 12 that is stock with the L12S and a cheaper NFP 12 by 25 Redux fan, which is static pressure optimized? Well, as it turns out, not really. In fact, the slim fan smokes it. The slim Noctua is already an excellent fan with results that are similar to an NFF 12 fan, but the NFF 12 tops out at a lower RPM. Now, sadly, with the L12S, the 92 millimeter fan doesn't fit on the back panel. The heat pipes flare out and allow only 20 millimeters of clearance, and the 92 millimeter fan is 25 millimeters thick, so it won't fit. I will note that having 220 millimeter fans really would have been a bigger benefit to most users, and it would have been optimal, even at a small extra cost, for users to receive two identical sickle flow fans instead of the 92 millimeter plus 120 millimeter in the mesh panel version. So after all that, we come to the conclusion that for overall performance, you can't beat more fans when it comes to a lower profile cooler like the L12S. Two fans at the bottom? two fans at the top, and one side panel fan is what's needed to get a low profile cooler running in the ideal scenario. So how does this stack up to the bigger sibling, the C14S? As much as I tried, I just could not get the best combo even at 100% on all fans to run the 3700X at 4.3 gigahertz. It just does not provide enough thermal headroom. At roughly equivalent thermal levels, the C14S is running the same chip at 4.3 gigahertz, while the best low profile configuration is clocking 100 megahertz lower. Now to me, this isn't a huge detriment since gains at those clocks are marginal, but it just it goes to show you that there is an untenable advantage to big heat sinks on CPU thermals. As a reference point, the best overclocks were 4.2 GHz for the low profile L12S, 4.3 GHz for the U12A tower cooler and the C14S top down cooler, and 4.4 GHz for an NZXT X52 AIO with NFA12 fans. In a combined scenario, how does it fare against the C14Ls? Does it make sense to go with a fully optimized L12S over a C14S? Now, I maxed out the fans on the L12S at 100%, and I also ramped up the bottom and side fans to about 1650 RPM, keeping the GPU at the same 70% fan level and the top case fans at the 1000 RPM mark. I wanted to hit the same noise level to get an apples to apples comparison, while keeping the effect of the two top exhausts versus one top exhaust to a minimum, since the C14S on my test board at least could only run one right exhaust. Now keep in mind that the L12S is maxed out at this point, while the C14S in the previous test still had room to go. 
Plus, the bottom fans weren't running very high, with priority given to the A14 fan on the radiator panel, which is quite a loud fan on the exterior facing panel. In the very best configuration, the L12S is fairly impressive for a little heatsink. This just goes to show what a huge difference the optimizations that we discussed here made. Still, there's just no match for a bigger heatsink, and even though the design is similar, heatsink mass matters. For the same test, the C14S just goes to show it has the edge when it comes to CPU thermals, and it had even more room to go since the fans weren't maxed out. Interestingly, GPU thermals are a bit better with the low profile cooler, most likely because the CPU is running warmer and therefore not as much exhaust is being taken in by the GPU. Now, unfortunately, at this point, the L12S was completely maxed out, so balancing off those thermals wasn't remotely possible. It's no C14S, but keep in mind that this C14S combo with NFA12 is a $105 combo, while the L12S is around $50, plus the case fan that has more than the tested C14S combo, so give or take $75. Well, these tests were a lot of fun to do. And based on these results, if you're using a low profile cooler, I'd be reaching for a five pack of Arctic P12s just to play with, because at that price point, you're gonna get a fantastic build while still maintaining a reasonable price. Uh, of course, I'll be rounding up a few more low profile coolers in the next few videos. So do look for those soon and we'll really see which cooler rocks out in the NR200. If you enjoyed the content today, please do click like and subscribe to stay connected for future content. And please use the links down below to support the channel if you're purchasing anything off Amazon. Thanks for joining me here on Machines and More, and I will see you again in the next video.